So, um, recently I bought a label maker, which works perfectly. This is a Dymo Letra tag. Then I decided to try sandpapering some heat shrink tube and running it through it, which didn't work. Fair enough, it was an experiment. But now I've got the problem that when I try and print labels, it doesn't feed through. We can see right here, if I load this up and try and print something, it won't feed through. The roller still turns, but I think the heads are not pushing down properly. So I need to find out what I broke. So let's uh, do a tear down. All right, I've got all the screws out of it. I'm going to um, try and pry the clamshells apart. See what's going on here. Be a little bit careful, just so we don't break any wires. Or okay, so there's a spring attached to the back in there. Um, that's the return for that. So we will need to uh, maneuver that spring out. Uh, one moment off camera. Okay, so as it turns out, you can maneuver this off uh, without detaching this spring. Now the first thing I see here when I open this is this little spring to a lever here, which looks like it's operated by this lid. So perhaps this lever here, if we correlate here, I think that correlates to the print heads and it's made out of zinc. It does indeed. I think the only problem might have been that I had the lid up. That might have been my only problem. I was looking for an excuse to open this and see if there was some sort of interface like a JTAG or something. I see these three test points here. I wonder if there's a ground, a TX and a positive 3.3 volt or something in here. I wonder. I'm not sure I want to mess with the ribbon cables but it does look like a fairly simple design and uh, I like this big capacitor here. Discrete components easy to fix. Um, black blob chip to be expected with something at this price point. These are often sold between $50 and $70 on supermarket shelves, but uh, sometimes, like I did, you can get them for about $30 or a bit less. So um, I think that interlock there also stops the blade coming up until the lid's closed as well, uh, or there's a push button in there. So I might actually reassemble this, and it might have been a simple fix. All right, now I don't have the um, screws in yet, but pay attention to the heads here. When we close this lid, they collapse down. So that might have been my problem with the heat shrink experiment too. Uh, but I'm going to, uh, let's just, uh, actually I have to put the screws in, and then I'll put the uh, tape back in and the batteries. We'll see what happens. Bit of heat shrink tube in the top here. Let's push the go button, see what happens. Open the lid, have a look. There is actually a little bit of marking on the heat shrink tube. I'll get the right size, we'll try this again in the future, but I think that's pretty cool. All right, so you guys have endured air conditioning sounds and uh, a bit of stupidity. So as it uh, turns out, I literally just uh, wasn't using the machine as per the instructions, which happens from time to time. But I also did really want an excuse to open it up and see what was going on inside it. So now uh, I've got some uh, insight into what's inside it. Anyway, if you like my stuff and you like seeing me get bogged or do mechanics or pull apart electronics or whatnot, this is probably the channel for you. A bit of varied stuff, but maybe you'll uh, subscribe, I don't know. Anyway, see you all in the next one and I hope this was fun.